Ladies and gentlemen, it's your main man, Master Cell here, leader of the Master Knights of the Round Table with an episode review of Irina the Cosmonaut. I understand I missed last week's episode. How bad I missed the review. So here's the truth, right? For the past 9, 10 weeks, it's basically been like since I had to review both of these episodes on top of everything else I got to do on the weekends, one episode is kind of pushed back. And I put focus on one episode and then go on the other. That other show being Blue Shiko Tencent, Jabba's Reincarnation. And for nine weeks straight, I have watched that show first, then watched Erina. Because I told y'all already once that I wasn't going to be knocking with Erina reviews anymore, just for me to miss the last week completely, I decided to watch Erina first. Especially since Erina's low-key to not even a sleeper, just like, long story short, more people are messing with this than I thought. I'm not saying Erina I thought it was a niche thing, but I've seen some polls recently in top four. Y'all getting down for your Tassandra Ray vampires. Before we get to this episode, let's just go over the last week's episode. Fuck! Well, it was another episode that kind of leaked on to this episode, you know. Basically, Lev going in there, doing his training to start training because he did get selected. And we had the return of Erina's light blue panties. But now on to this episode. Like I said, kind of continuation from last week. We start off with the other countries hating. Straight up hate. Straight up hating. Even when Lev got picked, even when he was the number three right at the bottom, he still got hit with the hate. That top guy is such a douche. No, he's the biggest bitch out of the three. And Aaron is being her Aaron herself. But there's some light in this darkness because we have a reform hater. Let's jump right into it. These three had to do what Aaron be doing. It had to do with that Aaron training. That big thing that spins over and over again. I almost killed him once. I wanted to see him get put into that hot thing. When they had to put in that sauna type thing to make him sweat. I wanted to see that, but they didn't show that. But they also had to jump. Get rid of that acnophobia. And... Using parachutes. Which was nothing for Lev because he was doing that for Irina anyways. I could pretend to know this girl's name. I just didn't have the fact that I'm bad with names. I just didn't bother because she's been a hater for 10 episodes. Basically, she jumps out. Gets scared like Irina was. Except she can't pull the thing. She can't pull it. She's going to die. Oh boy, Lev with the save. How many times have you saved with somebody in this season? Yo? I don't pull this no more, but Lev got that many care of the car. Let's be real. Nice guy using it for other people though. Especially since he ran into that tree. Yes, after Lev saved this girl, they had a talk afterwards. I guess a little heart to heart. And she explained, you know, the whole day. Yes, there's no discrimination. And basically, it's supposed to be equal thing with the woman, right? Woman and man are supposed to be equal. In the books, it is. But what people think and what they do. But we've seen how Erin never treated this whole time anyways. Yes, that was more so because she was a vampire rather than a female vampire, but... Let's not pretend I didn't have no stake in it. Am I saying it would have been different if it was a male vampire? At least a little bit. Verbal discrimination is one thing, but you talking me that old guy was going to be beating on a big ass male vampire? He's going to be hit. He's going to be swinging on that. The gender inequality is real in this show. With that being said, she took back and apologized for all her. I won't say smart or her bad remarks about Lev. And about Erina. And she even wanted to apologize to Erina straight up. She wanted to bury the hatchet. So she almost got a chance, but Erina was kind of. Mm -hmm. For those wondering, this is my last Erina video before No Shame November is over and all this is coming off. But then we got to the big thing at this episode, which really was Erina's being transferred, which doesn't sit well with me, but for different reasons than the obvious. Now, this show gave me one of the negative. Carrot Tuesday flashbacks, which nobody does that happen. That car tried to come out of nowhere, tried to run somebody over. Of course, when it happened to Aaron, it was actually deserving and kind of funny. Angela didn't need that bum. But when it happened in this show, they tried to hit Aaron. Aaron, being the skilled vampire cosmic that she is, she jumped out the way. Even still in a state of shock, though. Like, imagine trying to have it, imagine having to dodge a car. There ain't no everyday stuff you just brush off. Just for the guy to be working for the organization, talking about he needed to kill her, they had the secrets. Now get out. The reason why this doesn't sit well with me because all the talk of her being disposed of for the last three episodes. Because her being disposed of, let's be real. You think about killing. Think about making sure they don't talk. Silenced. When we heard every time they was going to dispose of Erin, we thought they was going to kill her. Then come here this guy talking about making sure the secrets are being kept. So not only is there that lingering feeling in the back of your mind that maybe Erin is just being traded because people are after her in their own organization. They got to trade her out of there just to... Quote unquote, keep her safe for the duration. Or put some JoJo stuff and sit it over there just so they can take her out themselves. Erin's life is not safe right now, y'all. But I guess we'll flow more into that next week because the biggest talking point coming out of the next week is the last day. On Thursday, Erin and Lev will be together alone for the whole day. No work, no bullshit. Which makes that the defining difference 
This is a time where these two gets to be together. Yes, they get to be alone together without anything else that's been heavily weighed on their mind throughout the entire series. This is not a point where we're going to talk about they haven't been OTP this whole time. This is not a point where we're going to act like there's no feelings whatsoever. It's definitely not a point where we're going to act like I haven't said since episode one my prediction for what kind of series this show was going to be. That's where everybody predicted what kind of show this was going to be. Now, I'm not saying something's going to happen. I'm not saying that. What I am saying, be damned if it don't. Let's be real, Erina likes this man. Really, Lev is the wild card in this. We don't know exactly for 100% if he likes Erina. But if you ask me, I believe he does. Now, I'm not asking for no big-ass confession. I'm not asking for them to get together. I'm not asking for no kiss. Like me sex. I'm pulling a card that I pulled in that one show where... I forget the name of it. I'm just going to say it. Yes, we realized when Erina got here, she was 17. Ain't it been like a year? I did a month plus past this episode already ago... <sighs> I'm pulling the card, y'all. Aaron is 18 by now. Just do <laughs> Let's do what that will. But yeah, man. I'm going to get up out of here. So, with that being said, you watch this video. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. Like this video for me, and I'll see y'all. Mm -hmm. This may be the most in our fields episode we have had yet. So next week's going to hit us, y'all. Like I said, don't know if anything will happen. But if you ask me, Aaron, put on a copy of that new Sonic album. Let that man know how you feel.